folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we are going over the 2021 Heartland Pioneer RG27 Toy Hauler. This is a nice toy hauler. As you can see, it is quite spacious, has a ton of seating, both in the table and the back, plus you have two additional Euro-style chairs over to the side. As far as garage space, you're looking at a little over 13 feet from the tail up to the kitchen. So you have enough space for some of your side-by-sides as far as length. For width, you're looking at about five and a half feet when this slide is closed. Um, technically, it's like five foot seven inches, but you'll be contending with like the curtains and a few other things. But so again, you're right about five and a half feet width with everything closed, That's you, that will be your uh, traveling garage space, if you will. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger, obviously, when things are opened up. In the very back, as I started off with, you have this massive table. This is uh, kind of a double-edged sword for me, right? It's one of my favorite things about the Pioneer toy haulers, and it's one of my least favorite things about the Pioneer toy haulers. Um, the reason I love it is because when you have toy haulers, kind of the idea is that, you know, it's, got, it's gonna be like the uh, Camp Central, right? Party Central. That's where everyone will be coming and hanging out. You have just a, a space where when it's raining out, you can easily fit six people here, play, you know, games together. You can, uh, you know, have huge meals. I love the idea of bringing everyone together. It's one of the things I really enjoy about this. However, what I don't like, uh, per se, is kind of the execution in the seats themselves. And, and let me show you why. So, one thing they did improve is that they added Velcro. That is a, a big deal for me. It was something that was very minor that before they didn't, and these would slide off, and it drove me insane. So they did listen. They added Velcro, so that way they stay up. I love that. When we take this giant cushion off, by the way, this does drop down into a big bed in case you're wondering. So you do have this for additional sleeping space for guests. Uh, but when we take a look at the, at kind of the couch itself, right? Very simplistic. You have some particle board here with some hinges. Um, and, and that's fine enough. It works a little tough with the table. I can't lift it all the way up. My bigger issue is right down here with the legs. If you can get down there, Sam and show. So this leg right here is fine, but the back leg, right kind of sits on the beaver tail and the problem is is that's angled and the leg isn't really meant to be on an angle and as you can see it's kind of loose in this bracket so what happens is when it's on an angle and you have force and it starts to push this actually has a propensity to want to pop out of that and that's what happened to me when i sat back there earlier um you know i sat on it and the the leg kicked out from underneath me maybe it's just this one model right it's it's uh that does happen I would, it's a, it's a newer leg system than what they had before. Cause again, this is a 2021, so they changed it up. So I'm hoping that that one's just a little loose. Um, but that is definitely something I would test out. You know, I'm over 200 pounds. I'm not the lightest guy in the world. So that could be a factor as well. Um, but you know, again, definitely, definitely check that out. Other than that though, I do love the setup. I do love the space. And as I mentioned, this can give you that additional sleeping space. Storage up top on both sides, a little bit different. So on this one side, you will see that they have, it's enclosed with frosted glass, and then you have the nets on the other side. I like that they added more enclosed storage. Uh, previous years, and again, this is a new floor plan, but previous years in the Pioneer Toy Haulers, you just had this on both sides, which is great, but sometimes you have things you wanna hide. So I do like that. Lights underneath both sides, as you'd expect. You have an exhaust vent, of course, in the corner there. Another one up here, just to, again, as you have in most toy haulers. Then you have more of the open storage there. Big window, so you can see out to your campsite, which is great. And then the two Euro chairs. So again, this is kind of a double-edged sword in the floor plan. Um, this is where the manufacturer shipped it from, which is good and great, but this is where I want my toys. So I would probably try to find a way to, you know, secure them up in this hall area, personally, if you plan on bringing them. Um, you know, maybe there's a, a better spot, but right here for me, it isn't where I want them, right? That's gonna take up my main space. When the slide is in, the slide comes to right about here so that you wouldn't have any space up here for toys. But uh, they are comfortable, believe it or not. You know, I know Euro chairs, they, they don't look super comfortable. They're a little bit harder, but it's actually kind of naturally in a comfortable position. They do recline as well, which is great. Now, as you can see, you can kind of rock back and forth, which makes my ADD very happy. Uh, if you take a look over at the other side here, you have the kitchen, slide out kitchen. This does, again, help add to some of the space when you are parked. Open up the uh, Dometic fridge-freezer combo there. You can see you have plenty of space. You have more storage up top, microwave, your hood. 
Backsplash going all the way across there. Uh, you have the recessed cooktop here as well. It is a three burner, which is great. So full size uh, RV cooktop, fold that up and back. Glass acts as a backsplash. You have the kind of uh, nicer grate on here as well. As I mentioned, three burner, front one's high output. This is a suburban brand. Drop down, little oven, nothing huge. You know, you can throw a few cookies in there, but definitely no Thanksgiving turkey. Pull out drawer, you have to have at least one. And then you have one there. You have another couple over here, which I'll show you in just a second. And then um, for right here, I guess, you know, it's kind of kind of what you want. You, you can put a trash can there. Personally though, I'd put my trash can under here. You can see how big that is. So I'd probably use that for pots and pans. But again, it's, you know, kind of whatever uh, is more functional for you. As we do move over, again, you have this extra countertop. If we move this, you can see all that extra countertop space you have. Actually, I'll, I'll show this just so you guys do have it. I know people always get uh, you know super concerned about price. This is an MSRP, folks. Obviously, you're going to get some off that, uh, but just so you can see that there. Um, one of the things I always tell people, because everyone always asks me about price. Folks, Camping World doesn't hide prices, right? I don't say them in my videos because it will change based upon locations. We are such a big company. Freight costs more out to California than it does to Michigan, so those prices will change. So that's why I always tell you at the end of the video to click on a link because that will actually give you the price that is closest to you. It is geographically tagged. So, um, you know, if you're ever wondering about price in any of our, in our, uh, uh, of the RVs in our videos, just click on the link in the description. You will get the price in the nearest availability. That being said, moving on, um, again, good countertop space right here. You have the electrical outlet. As far as countertop, nothing super special, right? It's a pretty standard T-mold. It does look nice though. You know, I like the color choice that they used, especially with, because they still have darker wood in here. Uh, so because it is T-mold, you have the top mount stainless steel sink, high rise faucet. You know, a, a pull out of course would be nice, but at least you get the height here, which I do like. Underneath, as I showed you, you have all that big storage there, a couple of drawers over to this side here. So you have three total drawers, plenty. As far as your D-rings, your tie-downs, you'll see two right up front here, making our way back a little bit further. You see you have a couple more. I believe there's a three running back here. Uh, maybe there's just two, hold on. Don't wanna give you bad information. Let me lift this up real quick. Just so I can see underneath there. There we go. And okay, so there's two running back on each side and I don't think there's one under here, no. Okay, so you have the two up front, you'll have two here and then two more in the very back. So a total of six tie downs here. Put this back real quick again. I do like the fact that they actually installed Velcro. Such a simple thing makes such a big difference. Uh, taking a look up top, so this is kind of your entertainment area if you will. So you have a spot for a TV there. A little bit of additional storage. This is actually kind of nice if you have like a DVD collection, you can throw that up there. Um, right here, this is uh, a, a Bluetooth, it's basically a, a car stereo, more or less is what it is. Um, you know, it's not going to be a DVD player or anything, so if you want a DVD player, you'll want to, you know, bring your own. But this does control the speakers in here as well as outside, and again, it is Bluetooth capable. Over on the side, you'll see that you have your thermostat. This will control the ducted AC, it does have ceiling ducted AC, as well as uh, floor mounted heat, and this thermostat will control both. You have uh, your lights there, pretty pretty easy stuff. Right down underneath, this is your um, your tank monitoring panel. So it also has your water pump control on there, um, slide room control, and then your power awning as well as a little bit additional storage. Moving up front into the bathroom. So one of the nice things about this floor plan is the fact that it does have a side aisle bath. A lot of times when you have you know a big floor plan like that with a big garage, you will have a walkthrough. That's not the case. You get the side aisle. As far as the toilet, I'm six foot tall. I do have great leg room. However, I honestly wish they would have angled it like so because here I have good leg room still and I have a lot of shoulder space. The way it is currently mounted, my shoulder's right up against the wall, right? So um, it's not super comfortable. Again, that is a pretty easy fix in my opinion. I, I think they kind of failed there. I need to go back to the drawing board, just turn it a little bit, um, you know. Honestly, if the, the PEX plumbing is long enough, you may be able to do it yourself. And then if we take a look underneath the sink, you see a little bit of additional storage right here. You know, probably a good spot for your extra toilet paper or under there, black tank chemicals. You got a, some decent countertop space in the bathroom. I do appreciate that. Electrical outlet there. Storage along the side for, you know, toothpaste, toothbrush, cologne, perfume, whatever else you need. You have a mirror so you can make sure you're looking nice, which 
you know, it'd be nice if they opened up uh, some places to cut my hair. It's getting a little long. Um, and then right up top, this is pretty nice too. You can use that as like a little linen closet, right? Throw some towels and stuff like that in there. And then we have the shower. So honestly, I'm actually pretty happy with the shower in this unit for a couple different reasons. One, I'm six foot tall. I don't have to bend down. That's a big deal to me. You'll see the curtain here actually has a bow to it. So that way it bows out, giving you a little bit more space. So not that you can see, but so when I turn, you know, I'm not, I'm not hitting the curtain, which I really appreciate that. I hate when I turn and the curtain's all on me. Just not a good feeling. Uh, in, in the shower itself is actually pretty decent size. I don't have my tape measure on me. Um, but you know, it's going to be uh, maybe three foot, something like that. Um, so it's actually a, a pretty decent size shower here, which I like, you know, something that's a little bit different from the Neo angle, which a lot of times is a little bit smaller, pretty standard stuff. As far as the hand wand there, kind of like faux tile, um, in the back for the surround. The other thing I like is if you notice this surround is all one piece. A lot of times manufacturers will have, you know, like a three piece surround. Um, I like that. It's just one, right? Less chance for leaks. The only, uh, seam you have will be right down here at the bottom and the way it fits together, this bottom shower pan actually goes up behind that, that uh, wall surround. So again, less chance for any kind of leaks, which is a good thing. Making our way up to the bedroom. Hold on a second, Sam. Don't want to hit you with the door here. Got a little bit of a door game to play. Um, let me make my way in here. There's some stuff over here to show. So pretty standard as far as the bed. You got your camper queen bed in there. There's a little bit of storage underneath. Pop that guy open, you can see. Electrical outlets on both sides, as well as uh, you know some nightstands here. Again, nothing you know too terribly impressive. It's a um, you know pretty standard panel on there, but you can fit uh, you know a CPAP machine if you have a uh, cell phone you need to set there, glass of water, whatever. Wardrobes on both sides of the bed. Looking right up top, you'll see the frosted glass with some additional storage there. Um, this is for your, uh, your wine guard. If you want like a Wi-Fi extender, or if you want Wi-Fi while you're on the road. You do have to have a cellular plan for that. The control for it was kind of out by the lights, but that's where that uh, is installed, that it is prepped for that. And then right here, you see some additional storage up top and also your TV connections are up there. So if you want a spot for TV, that's kind of your area. And then take a look at this. Not only do you have the side wardrobes, but you have all this additional storage, which I think they nailed it. I love having more storage for clothes because you know, sometimes I go on you know a week or two long trip and I don't want to wash laundry. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the all new 2021 Heartland Pioneer RG27. Power tongue jack right up front. This makes it much easier to hook up and disconnect from your tow vehicle because all you have to do is flip a rocker switch to raise and lower the tongue. You also see a light for added visibility at night and manual override in the rare event the motor does fail. Behind that, you have two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover. Rails here for your battery, diamond plating to protect the front end from rocks and debris that get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And coming around to the side, you will see the pass through storage. Note that this one does have a uh, covered hinge on here. The hinge is covered rather, so that way you don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. Also, it has the key alike system. This is actually pretty cool. Um, for those of you that don't know, most RVs use what they call a 751 key for your storage, and every 751 key in the world is the same. So if someone else has an RV, they can break into your pass-through. This is a unique key to this RV, so that way, whatever you put in here is secure. If you take a look inside, you'll see that it is pretty good storage there. I, you have to excuse me, I did say pass-through in the beginning, just habit. It's not truly pass-through storage, uh, but it is good front storage compartment there. So you can have some other items. Of course, the great thing about a toy hauler is it's so open, you have a ton of space inside to store the majority of your large items. Underneath, this one has power stabilizer jacks. It's one of those things where it's just kind of a, a nice extra amenity, right? Granted, you do not want to use those to level. You'll still want to use leveling blocks, but once you're leveled out, you just simply flip the switch there and your uh, stabilizer jacks will come down to help stabilize the RV so you're walking around inside, it's not rocking on you. That front control controls the front two, there's a rear one to control the rear two. Standard three pull-out steps, pretty simple and easy. They fold up into the underbody, fold out when you need them. It does have the larger grab handle, so that way you have some extra control when entering or exiting the RV. You will also see right up top, this one has a power awning with an LED light as well as some outside speakers. Those speakers are connected to that multimedia center inside, but as I mentioned, the unit is Bluetooth capable. Making our way back a little bit, as I promised right there is the control for the rear stabilizer jacks. On the very back is the ramp door. 
open this guy up real quick. Nice and simple, just like this. Boop. Hey Sam, do you have that? Do you have the tape measure on you? Let me see that tape measure real quick. I just want to give give the people a quick measurement of the door. Let's see what we got here. So for the door, they're yeah, looking about six foot high, and for width. Uh, about seven and a half, a little over seven and a half wide. So just to kind of give you an idea what the door is. Thank you, sir. Had to grab that mid video. Need a tape measure for too many things. Then as we drop that down, as you can see, folks, it has helper springs. So nice and easy, you know, one hand operation just like that. Doesn't take a lot. Sits down pretty flat. You'll see here that it has 3,000 pounds when it's evenly distributed. 1,000 pound uh, max per wheel contact. So pretty easy stuff there. Um, I did want to show you this real quick. This is kind of what I was griping about a little bit in the very beginning of the video was the leg. So as you can see, it kind of sits on an angle right here. And when you put weight on it, you can kind of see it doesn't take much for this to want to pop out. You can see, I mean, look at that. It just, I don't know. They need to come up with a better system. That's all. So uh, other than that, you know, I, for, for what you get, guys, this is honestly a great toy hauler for the price you pay. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. Very entry level toy hauler, but if you're looking to get your toys from point A to point B, you don't want to break the bank. Sure, there's some flaws on it, but honestly, this it, it works very well. Um, and part of that too, right? If you take a look underneath, you'll see this one has a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So if you're running the forced air inside, it'll blow down below. It'll keep things from freezing up on you. You can see your valves. The valve body themselves are tucked up into that underbody and insulated as well to make sure your valves don't freeze on you. Because if your valves freeze, you get a nice pretty little thing they call a poopsicle, where you just have a bunch of frozen poop in your pipe and that's not what you want. So uh, that is, again, a great feature if you plan on doing some colder weather camping. 30 amp detachable power cord plugs in right there. Right up front, you have a fresh water inlet, city water inlet, black tank flush to wash out your black tank nice and easily. And last but not least, your outside shower. Drop that one open just to show you that does have hot water access as well as cold, of course. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the all new 2021 Heartland Pioneer RG27 Toy Hauler. If you're interested in this unit and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, and if you were designing the RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.